Good evening, everybody. The calls for boycotts grow, and Indiana lawmakers are feeling the heat. Legislative leaders say they plan changes to the controversial new Religious Freedom Act to make it clear that it does not allow discrimination against gays and lesbians. Religious freedom and the right to be free from discrimination can coexist together. They have for many years in this country, and that's what we should all strive for. If Republicans want a fix, there's only one choice and that is repeal this law. Indiana's Republican legislative leaders said today they're working to add language to the new law to make it more clear. Critics say discrimination against gays was the whole point of the bill. Businesses and organizations have criticized the law and the hashtag boycott Indiana has been trending on Twitter. GOP leaders say similar bills exist around the country and haven't gotten the backlash seen in Indiana. Now, Kentucky is one of those states that also passed a Religious Freedom Restoration Act. So why didn't Kentucky's vote spark calls for a boycott? Local 12's Joe Webb has been looking into that. He's in the newsroom now with what he's found. Joe? Well, Cammy, Kentucky House Bill 279 was easily passed in 2013. The governor vetoed it, but his veto was overridden by the General Assembly. It had the overwhelming support of northern Kentucky lawmakers. So why no controversy? Well, we found two reasons. It's a little different law in a different time. It's been two years since Kentucky passed its religious freedom law, but it doesn't seem to have changed the way Kentucky businesses do business, and it didn't spark talk of boycotts. There wasn't a lot of hype over the legislation being passed because it did mirror pretty much the federal law that was in place, Kentucky's that is. Uh, today, Indiana's goes a step further. The Kentucky law the governor vetoed but got overridden dealt with religious disputes between a person or entity and the government. The Indiana bill is a little different. It also applies to disputes between private citizens, which some say opens the door wider to discrimination. Ours passed without a whole lot of uh, fanfare or controversy. State Senator and Lieutenant Governor candidate Chris McDaniel voted for Kentucky's religious freedom law. It was a very simple and fundamental matter of, of constitutional rights and in, in, in protecting those rights that government shouldn't infringe on people's uh, uh, firmly held religious convictions without a compelling government interest. Kentucky's law sparked some protests and a governor's veto, but nothing like what has hit Indiana. The difference is a lot more than legal verbiage. But more importantly, I think that the tides have turned in this country. I mean, you've got 30 plus states who now recognize same-sex marriage, and I think that that has kind of been the litmus test to take this to the next level. And I think this goes back to just showing that in the last two years we've come a long way, yeah, whether it be social media and the way that people communicate today, and the number of corporations and businesses who no longer uh, participate in, in any discriminatory act. Now we still don't know what Indiana will ultimately do with this bill. There's a lot of talk about clarifying the Religious Freedom Bill's intent. We also don't know if anyone will really follow through on the threat of boycotts. Moving forward, you can be sure other states will take a closer look at Indiana's decisions before they make their own. Cammie? All right, Joe Webb, thank you. And every representative and senator from Northern Kentucky voted for the Religious Freedom Restoration Act in 2013. Only Representative Arnold Simpson of Covington voted against overriding the governor's veto.